If there's one thing that I often find myself impressed by in this wide world of coffee gear, it's the ingenuity of manual espresso machine design. I've used the press, I've used the twist, and now with the Supercop, I've used the ratchet. And if your first thought after that last sentence is, super what? I was right there with you just a few months ago. The Supercop brings a unique twist to the classic and unmistakable lever espresso machine platform by utilizing a ratcheted gear and piston system to build its brew pressure. It was designed and developed with the goal of simplifying the espresso process without compromising the shot or the need for electricity. And as you may or may not already know, I really love unique and relatively undiscovered espresso gear, so this one falls right directly into my sweet spot. As always, this review, like all of my reviews, isn't a paid product placement. The folks at Supercop were just kind enough to send me a unit to test, and they were not given draft access or edits to my review prior to being released, so all the thoughts and findings are mine and mine alone. But before we dig into it, a quick word from this video's actual sponsor, Stand Art Magazine. Nothing goes together quite like a cup of coffee and some quality reading, and Stand Art Magazine falls into that pocket of happiness perfectly. This humble, independently published, coffee-focused magazine is always full of informative articles, in-depth profiles, and stunning visuals. On top of the good reads, each issue comes with a tasty coffee from some of the world's best roasters, which takes the whole experience full circle, from your brain buds to your taste buds. So head over to standartmag.com slash Prometheus, or hit the standart link down in the description to snag $5 off your own subscription of coffee and culture shipped direct to your door nearly anywhere in the world with a money back guarantee. Now that's what I like to call a win-win-win. A lot of espresso fans will find themselves pretty familiar with the general silhouette of the Supercop, but as manual machines go, they can be pretty unique in their operation, so let's get a little more into it and look at each piece and its function. The most natural starting point is the lever, as that's not only the centerpiece, but also the main component of brewing on the Supercop. The lever and its associated joints are made up of steel, and they feel very sturdy and reliable. It's also got a comfortable grip and some nice detail work. As it's pressed and released, the exposed ratchet mechanism pushes the piston down into the translucent polycarbonate water chamber. The chamber itself can hold up to 60 milliliters, and the installed dispersion screen is actually pretty effective at producing an even flow of water into the portafilter. Which many coffee folks will be glad to hear is the highly sought after and compatible 58 millimeter, which means you can utilize a wide variety of tools and accessories in your pursuit of the perfect manual shot. And finally, beyond the pieces that are directly part of the brewing process, the Supercop sits on a robust aluminum post that's bolted directly to a heavy wooden base, which does provide a nice counterweight to the lever action. Most modern manual espresso machines carry over some of the workflow from a traditional pump-driven unit, but there are quite a few points where they tend to deviate, and one of those big differences is preheating, which is a step I tend to find necessary with the more medium to light coffees that I tend to brew, but is considered not required by many, including the Supercop inventors. But personally, I tend to run a batch or two of boiling water through the chamber and portafilter prior to my first shot. As I mentioned earlier, the chamber is made of a thick polycarbonate, and it holds heat pretty well and doesn't get hot to the touch, which makes things more comfortable for pulling back-to-back -back shots or dialing in. Once you've got the coffee ground and the puck prepped, the chamber is then snugly snapped into the portafilter, filled to the second line with boiling water, and placed into the group. Another deviation from the traditional espresso machine and even most manual press options is the ratchet function of the lever. From its fully released state, the lever can be pressed and lifted a total of six times, which produces the pressure used to extract the coffee. The lever action itself is very fluid and does provide some pressure feedback, but when dialed in it shouldn't be excessive or difficult to press. Plus, it's nicely countered by the heavy wooden base. As the coffee begins to appear, you can track and control the flow by pressing softer or harder to compensate. And when you've reached the desired yield, lifting up all the way on the lever to a click will release the piston and pressure from the chamber, immediately stopping the extraction. In my tests, I found the best results in the cup by pacing the presses about one every five seconds for a straight through pull. And with lighter, fruitier coffees, by pausing for about 10 seconds after the first two to three presses for some mild pre-infusion. In terms of its max yield, that depends on your dose, i.e. how much water the grinds can soak up. But with the recommended 60 milliliters of water and an 18 gram dose, my biggest pulls were around 55 grams. 
The cups themselves were topped with a nice layer of crema, and in terms of flavor, they're nicely textured and complex, with all the character you'd expect from a properly extracted espresso. Personally, I had no issues hitting 20 plus percent extractions on a wide variety of coffees. And finally, cleaning is as simple as a wipe with a damp cloth, and the pucks knock out smoothly, lending to a quick back-to-back -back workflow. As beautifully built and fun to use as a Super Cop is, there are definitely still some quirks and downsides that can range from a mild annoyance all the way to a complete deal breaker. Having used a lot of manual machines, I came to the Super Cop expecting a similar if not equal level of control. But the ratcheted pressure mechanism doesn't quite work that way. Essentially, the extraction is done in phases, as each press of the lever pushes another dose of water through the coffee, and the pace of the lever motion plays a big part in the timeline of the shot. So unlike other manual machines where you have more or less immediate second-to-second -second control of the pressure and can actually maintain a consistent flow, the Supercop feels a lot like guesswork, as each press feels like its own extraction. Also, if you like your shots hot or scolding, you may want to look elsewhere. Even fully preheated, multiple shots deep, the Supercop seems to struggle getting above 145 degrees. And the final point I'll make, and I feel like I say this a lot, it's the price tag. The unit itself is 660 euros, which as of today is equal to the dollar, and another 100 for shipping. So landing just short of $800, this makes the Supercop the most expensive manual machine that I'm currently aware of. Overall, the Supercop is a really unique entry into the manual market. Its looks, feel, and general fit and finish is great, and there doesn't appear to be any corners cut on the materials or the design. Along with that, it's got very few moving parts, meaning maintenance would be minimal. And of course, most importantly, it produces tasty espresso, and it does that very simply, which from what I understand was the creator's specific aim. But it does fall short in a few key abilities that I personally look for in a manual machine, like easy storability, portability, and near-endless controllability. Yet, like most products in the end, it really depends on what you're looking for and what you want to get out of it. For those well-versed in the espresso arena looking to explore pressure, it may not hit all the right buttons because its control is pretty finite. But if you want a simple, well-built and consistent countertop option without all the variables, the Supercop is worth your consideration. And with all that said, I think it's time I wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. So let's talk manual machines. What sort of expectations do you have for them? Is it controllability, portability, something else? Drop your answers to those questions and any others you may have, super cop related or not, in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. A big thank you to this month's Patreons, Stephen, Claire, Sam, Bound Copy, Spookus, Noel, Cheryl, Tom, Sean, Horison, Rose, Squeegee, Ads, Josh, Corey, Tim, Tony, Matt, Jason, Cameron, Robert, Underdunk, Jeffrey, Jeff Roth, Mike, Byron, Tyler, BJK Cafe, JRC, Absolute, Stephen, Home Barista Coach, Keefe, John, Gumby, Alexis, Barista, Michael, Arthur, Tech Hum Advisors, Ed, Happy Camper, Gary, Devo, Ben, Monster04, Bruce, Lilac, Brooks, Henry, Sam, Kang, Sergey, Matthew, Miroslav, Malkonig, Schlack, Shrey, Stephen, Eric, and Junior, and of course, a big thank you to the barista and barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And of course, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week. My blog at Spromethius.com. My coffee at littlegiant.coffee. And as always, stay caffeinated. Bony boy.